Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and welcome to this week's Geek Week Review, or GWR as it's better known now. And this week's GWR is going to be a little bit different because not only am I going to give you a look back on what I did last week on the channel, what I've got coming up on the channel, but I also want to talk to you about these two products sitting on my desk here. So what happened last week? Well, I did some top five videos, uh, my top five tech products, and also my top five movies or films. And the reason I did those videos is because I thought it was really nice to give you an insight into what I enjoy technology-wise, but also different things as well. So my top five movies really gives you a look at what movies I rate really highly, but not necessarily for the storyline or the action or the cinematography but because they were watched at certain times throughout my life and they've really got a, a really good memories for me as to, to why they remained favourite movies of mine. And it also gives you an opportunity to chime in in the comments on those particular videos to let me know what your top five technology products are or your, your top five movies. And I have got more top fives planned. Uh, I'll talk to you about that in, in a little while. I also did some more of these new format videos where I deal with new product releases. I covered off the HTC One M9, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. Uh, also some smartwatches, uh, also the Sony Xperia Z4 tablet. And those videos are going really well. I'm still working out the camera settings because I present them with a screen sort of behind me actually on, on that side, uh, but I'm trying to get the camera settings really good so that you can actually see the information displayed on the screen as well as obviously see me nicely exposed and properly properly lit and it's really difficult because the screen produces quite a lot of light so i have to make sure i've got enough foreground lighting otherwise i'll come out very dark and also the area behind the screen in in that side of the studio needs to be lit as well so it's quite uh, technically challenging to get that looking nice. Uh, also, I uh, did my normal mega gadget collection video on the channel, but I did something a little bit different with that one. Now, for those of you who don't know, the mega gadget collection videos are longer format videos, normally anywhere between sort of 10 and 20 minutes. And I show you a whole range of technology and gadgets in the one video. It gives you a sort of a snapshot of the product a little bit of opinion from me about it, uh, a close-up look at it, what it does, uh, and, and it's a, a really nice format video. It gets some very good feedback. But last week I did something a bit different as well because not everyone wants to sit through a long format video. So I also cut that Mega Gadget collection up for the first time I've done this uh, into shorter individual product videos as well. So you'll have seen, if you have your subscription to my channel, set with uh, upload uh, updates, you'll have seen your inbox absolutely inundated with videos from me. And it wasn't meant to be spam, it was just because I thought I'd put them all up at the same time. So you can choose to either watch the long Mega Gadget collection or you can just pick and choose which products you wanna watch. So hopefully that was well received. I'm actually recording this before it goes on the channel uh, because I record this particular video on a Friday uh, really early uh, so that I can edit it and get it ready for Monday morning. So hopefully you'll have enjoyed that sort of format mega gadget collection and the individual little videos. Now what have I got coming up next week? Well, video wise, I've got uh, some Nintendo videos coming up to the channel. You'll see some little Nintendo Amiibos behind me here. And that gives you a clue as to a couple of the videos coming up next week. I've also got my Geek Lifestyle video coming up midweek, and then also another Mega Gadget collection coming up next week as well. And coming into the studio, so not recorded yet, but I've got some more cameras coming in. I've got some cameras from Nikon coming into the studio, which I'm gonna be testing, and also doing some long format videos to do with those cameras. I've also got a Pentax KS2 coming in. I mentioned this previously. A lot of people, overlook the Pentax brand. They disregard it because it's not a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony or a Panasonic or an Olympus, for example. It's, it's off of a lot of people's radars, 
but it's a really well specified camera um, and I think it deserves to be covered. So I'm going to be covering that alongside the new Nikons. I've also got a new Canon camera coming in, but that's not till next month. And then hopefully I'll have some uh, really good uh, content to share with you with regards to how these cameras perform. Also a, a, an in-depth look at the sort of menu system, the ergonomics, uh, these sort of photos and the quality they produce, the video quality as well, because all of these cameras do video as well nowadays. So I want to do some really in-depth videos for you so it gives you a good idea as to whether you should put these particular cameras on your shortlist for your next purchase. So exciting times. Oh, and I've also got a Panasonic camera coming in as well. Really excited about that. So I'll share those all with you in due course. Of course, you'll get unboxings of those cameras as well. Now, the reason this GWR is a little bit different is because I want to talk to you about these two products here. And uh, also a little bit about the company that I purchased these from. And the first product I want to show you is not the camera. This is my Canon PowerShot GX7 inside the case. Now this is what I use for my daily videos and I used it actually for my studio tour that I've just recently recorded. And as part of the deal, I got this from Park Cameras, uh, there was this official Canon PowerShot GX7 case which was delayed. Smells nice, the sniff test. But it's got this really soft lining to it and it's purpose made for the GX7. You can see this cut out here in this section actually goes over the lens and then it snaps shut. It's also got a sort of loop on the back so you can attach it to a belt and a shoulder strap as well or neck strap. And this came separately so Park Cameras remembered that this wasn't in stock when they sent me out the GX7 and then they sent it at a latter date via courier and um, I'm really pleased with it because it now means I can pop this in the case when I'm carrying it outside. And it's a really nice quality leather case and it smells really nice. So I just wanted to share that with you and just say thank you again to Park Cameras for remembering to send me the case when it came into stock. A nice bonus item that came along with the GX7. And then the other product I want to show you is this. Now this is by no means new. You know, it's not a newly launched product, although it's quite recent. This is the GoPro Hero 4 Black. And I didn't get one when they were first announced due to budget sort of issues at the time. I just couldn't afford to buy it in. And um, again, I got this from Park Cameras. Uh, fantastic price. They sent it out really well packaged. And the reason I got this in, and I will be sharing you, with you an unboxing with this, even though it's been out for a little while now, but I wanted to use this for some different angles on my videos. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm thinking of placing it just sort of off camera. So it will go a little bit higher than that, just so it's out of shot. And then if I'm reviewing something or showing you something that I'm holding in front of me, you can get a different angle of view from it. But I also got this for another reason. I really love my photography. And this will allow me to give a different perspective to some of my photos. So I really want to try positioning this in weird positions or different angles, low positions, maybe putting it on the floor, uh, putting it up high on a stick um, and just get, getting some different perspectives. This is ultra wide angle as well and produces decent quality photos. It's either 11 megapixel or 12 megapixel photos from this. And the examples I've seen from other people uh, have been very, very good. In fact, one of my viewers and somebody I talk to quite a lot on Twitter, Mummy Gina, hi Mummy Gina, you know who you are, um, who communicates to me a lot and I absolutely love her photography, recently got a GoPro Hero 4 Silver and I've seen a couple of photos from it and they are really good. I'm really very, very impressed with what this produces photo-wise as well as video, of course. So I've got that for uh, a mixture of uses. So expect to see the unboxing soon and also some examples from it as well. I'll probably share them on my Instagram or maybe somewhere else. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you very quickly, and this is becoming a long GWR, they're not normally this long, they're normally snapshots, five minutes, uh, is about park cameras. I get a lot of people on Twitter asking me whether they should get X camera. So should I get this Canon camera or this Sony camera or Olympus? from this company and they quote a fantastic price it's so so cheap and it's normally from a company 
or, or, or a range of companies that import the cameras, so they're grey imports. Now, with some manufacturers, you still get warranty, but I think with the majority of camera manufacturers, when you get a grey import, you don't get the manufacturer's warranty in the UK. So if something goes wrong, you've got the hassle factor of getting the repair done. Uh, some of the companies say they cover the repair costs, some don't, some do their own warranties, some do square trade warranties or Mac warranties where you have to send the camera off. And I think it's just a, a hassle, I really do. And I always respond in a similar manner, which is, yeah, if you wanna save a lot of money, then take your chances by all means. But when I'm buying a camera where I'm really gonna rely on it to capture those memories for me, and I want it to work, and I want it to be reliable, and if something goes wrong, I wanna be able to get good service, I'd rather pay a little bit more, because sometimes the savings aren't that fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's great to save 20 or 30 pounds on a camera, or 50 pounds, but if something goes wrong, and then you have to send that abroad to get fixed, and you spend 30 or 40 pounds and you're without your camera for a longer period of time, then was the saving really worth it? And that's why I always recommend buying in the UK. And I always get all of my camera gear from Park Cameras. Uh, yes, you can get it cheaper, but with Park Cameras, fantastic service, fantastic knowledge. When they pack the product, they take that extra step of care to wrap it properly. Uh, with lots of bubble wrap, they put it in a strong box. And if you've got a problem, they're in the UK and they help sort it out and they do it uh, so well. They're, they're just great customer service. And it can sort of be uh, sort of compared to where people say, oh, you pay too much for Apple products. You pay an Apple premium or an Apple tax for Apple products. And yeah, that is true. I use Apple products, but whenever something goes wrong, Apple step up to the plate and they sort it out really, really quickly give me a great, a great customer experience. And that's what I experience with Park Cameras, which is why when you ask me for a recommendation, that's what you normally get back. Not always, but for the majority of the time, I always say, yeah, go here because great customer service. And I think it's worth paying the asking price uh, rather than saving a little bit of money and having that hassle factor further down the road. So anyway, wanted to cover that off in this video. I hope that helps you. If you need any advice on photography gear, camera gear, uh, lenses, video cameras, anything at all, then always feel free to tweet me at Geekanoids. So that's it for this week's GWR. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one.